I thought it was uh, important to, to videotape and document the, uh, the coil itself. Uh, of course you can see the ground lug. This is looking from the bottom. This is pin number three, we'll call it. Uh, from the drawings that I've seen other people make, uh, they call that number three. They call this one number one and this one number two. Okay. Number three to ground, from number three to ground is the um, feedback loop. Okay. And so this end of it ties to the 6K resistor, which you can see the very end of it there. I had trouble getting all this to focus on this camera and then this is the that that is R6 that's the 6000 ohm resistor and then this is uh, C7 which is a 0.0014 microfarad capacitor and it goes over to terminal 2 which also has the uh, C3 gimmick capacitor and all that is is three turns two turns two to three turns of wire this one goes to uh, pin four of the 77 tube and the other end of it as you can see just it just uh, suspends down into the uh, the coil form itself this is basically a terminal block this is not connected to any of the coils uh, on there. Uh, then pin number one here and that's the one that goes to uh, C11 and uh, the, uh, some other connections and this is the secondary to ground of the uh, coil itself. Uh, so it'll, from this terminal to ground is the uh, secondary of the transformer or the coil itself. Whereas from ah, from three to uh, ground is the feedback loop on it. Let's uh, flip this sort of thing around and uh, show you how the windings are laid out. I believe if you'll look right there, the green on both sides, that's probably where our problem is at. Uh, it has a tendency to uh, corrode and the wire opens up there. Not that it matters, but I found the break. Uh, as you can see there. Uh, what I did is I connected up my own meter with uh, the uh, continuity check with the with the uh, sound, and I used a, a, a pin, and I poked through the uh, insulation until I quit getting continuity, and uh, then examined it right there in a in a spot, and the wire was broken. Not that it's going to do me any good. If I were to even try to repair this. Uh, you know that many winding it's it's 14 15 winding so uh, it's best if I just go ahead and rewind it okay from pin 3 uh, is the wire to the feedback loop and it went under a little plastic tab right there which I broke it off and there's the wire, if you'll see. That's the wire that come from uh, pin three. And it started its turn, and it's counterclockwise for looking at the bottom of the coal. Okay, it's going that way. Counterclockwise looking at the bottom. Now, it broke right along in here. It was corroded, there was some green, and it had corroded. So I kept pulling the wire till I found, and it came all the way back around here. So there's a turn of wire that's not there. This is the other end of it. Now, I was able to get continuity from here to ground. Um, 
and so I, I checked the uh, and it, it turned out that it was about um, um, well I had the data written here somewhere anyway it was less than the prime or the, the, the coil itself but it was reading um, 2.2 ohms of course that's a little bit of wire less but that's pretty close and I put little my little magic box on it and it was reading 0 0.01 millihenries or 10 microhenries so that's that's a ballpark number I wish it was intact but it wasn't um, I could probably just tie that together and probably with the, the, the condenser or the tuning or the variable condenser could probably make it tune but I'm going to go back since there is some more corrosion in this area so I'm going to do that. Um, I have counted 14 turns around and actually 14 and 3 quarters because it goes all the way back around again to here. So you can see how this is laid out. This was the beginning of it. It starts on this side. It winds down, downward, and then it ends there. If you can see it comes out and ends there and goes to the ground. 14 three quarters turn and that's approximately 36 gauge wire. Okay as we unwind this, we're going to count the number of turns also. I mean, I've counted them several times, and I believe I'm correct with the 14 and 3 quarters. And that's consistent with the with the other people that's rewound these. But one sure way is to count them as you unwind it. Uh, as you know, we've already lost one winding as from the break all the way back around to this point. So we're going to um, count it as we take it off. Now, there is another way to determine the length of wire. There's more wire on here than you really think there is. But, uh, and, but uh, hopefully we can get it off in one piece and measure it and have a good idea of how much to go back. Otherwise, we're going to be dealing with a spool in one hand, uh, and that's not really where we want to go with this. But, uh, uh, you know, by using uh, the uh, circumference formula, what is that, 2 pi? times the radius, 2 pi r, and uh, calculating how many, uh, how, how much one turn is, is worth, and uh, then multiplying it times, you know, add a couple of turns just for good measure, uh, and, uh, and come up with the length of wire. So let me, uh, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to get take hold of this, and I've already got one, one count down, so there's one already. And so I'm just going to basically pull this back around one more time and hopefully keep it intact. And there's no need watching this at this point. I, I, I'll show you when I get done with it. Okay. I uh, counted 14 turns. That was including the one that was already missing. And then when I pulled it around to right back to this spot, there was some corrosion and it broke again. And then what was left was three quarters of a turn. And there's part of it and it broke again, had another break in it. So, you know, that's why I did not uh, just try to tie it together and patch it because we need to replace that. Now, based upon our calculations, if you use pi or two pi, times the right radius, 2 pi r. And pi is 3.14. And so if you multiply that, what is that? Uh, 3 point or 6, 6.28 or something like that. And the diameter of this coil is one inch. So the radius of that is a half inch. So you'd multiply that times 0.5. So that gives you pi again. If you multiply pi times 2 and then you multiply it times 0.5, it gives you pi. So each turn is around 
one two one four inches okay um so and we i went ahead and multiplied it by what 16 turns instead of just for grins and giggles and that gives me well over 50 inches well when i measured this out it was very close to 49 inches so uh, we're going to start with probably five feet of wire and uh, then uh, uh, I'm going to have to do some prep work on this. I don't know, excuse me, I don't know if I can use this plastic that's on there, but I'm going to have to clean it up just a little bit and, uh, and take the wires off of the terminals and uh, get this ready to return. Now, I may have to replace this plastic. <clears throat> My understanding, this is not critical. This spacer or this form, that's a, the plastic insulation here is not that critical. Um, and actually the resistance of this coil is not that critical because the wire today is going to be different than the wire of, of 80 some odd years ago. Uh, what is important is the number of turns and the direction it's, it's going to be turned in. So we just need to make sure everything's clean, re ready to solder. The, the prepping the ends of the, the wires is going to be very important. And, uh, so let me get to that and see where, uh, see what we can come up with and maybe we can still use that plastic I don't know all right I've rolled off five feet 60 inches which is way too much but uh, uh, I wanted to make sure I had enough <laughs> and uh, what I did is I took uh, my little cheap old mini torch and hit the ends of the um, wire for just a few seconds not to overheat the wire and then just took my fingernails and scraped the enamel off this this uh, this stuff is designed to uh, your soldering iron is supposed to take it off but uh, I wanted to do a continuity check and the 60 inches of wire came up like 2.7 ohms so I think we're in the ballpark like I say the resistance is not that big a deal uh, it's the uh, inductance and the uh, number of turns and the direction so what I'm going to do is I clean this off just a bit so what I'm going to try to do is put on a uh, some double-sided tape and that's going to do two things that's going to uh, this is kind of cracked and that's okay but I wanted to make sure that uh, I had a, a surface that, as I wound it, the wire would kind of stick to. And we'll see, we'll see if that works for us. Okay, let's see if we can fit this on in a decent manner. I've already got it crooked. <laughs> That's why I don't like to work on camera sometimes. And I came up a little bit short, but that's okay. Let me make sure I get this good and straight. Here's a view of the uh, double-sided tape here. Um, and uh, this is pin three that where it be all begins now I didn't connect this wire to pin three yet I just left enough because if you remember it folded over the top of the entire coil and went back down in there so I'm just leaving it loose for now and then I'm going to wind 14 and three quarters turn hoping it will stick and I can keep it lined up. Now, you know, the important thing on this is to <laughs> make sure that you don't get kinks and uh, tangled of this wire. It's very it's like hair. And uh, so I'm going to do this off camera, but I'll show you as I progress uh, the results. Okay, there's seven of them, so we're about halfway done. Uh, 
I've uh, read other people where they said, well, it's kind of sloppy looking, but the turns, and you know, you want to try to make them spaced evenly the best you can, but sometimes uh, uh, it's not always the case. Uh, the double-sided tape seems to be working really, really well for me because it's staying in place. It's not slipping. I'm not holding it. It's 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 staying in place. So we'll see how how it does when when we get it done. Okay, there's 14 and three quarters, and as you can see, the wire is laying in place because of the double-sided tape. Now. I was winding this under a magnifying uh, light, so uh, I can't see that good, and this is fairly small. So um, there it is. I've got to prep the end. This is how much wire I had left of 60 inches. As you can see, there's about six inches left, so I think we're in pretty good shape on that. Let me dress these ends the same way. I'm gonna. Uh, the other end is already dressed. Uh, that I started with, uh, I dressed this in just for the, for the continuity check in the beginning, but uh, right here uh, I'll cut it, dress it, put it back in here and solder it to ground, then we'll do a final check on it. Okay, here's the finished coil. Uh, I've soldered it to the terminals. Uh, I took a little beeswax and uh, Belted it and put it on the uh, the windings, and then I used a hair dryer to uh, smooth it out a little bit, just to let it run. And that'll do two things: that'll help keep the windings in place, and also keep some moisture out. Let's hook it up to the magic box and see how close I came to the uh, uh, the original numbers. And now I'm not saying the original numbers were correct, but that's what I measured. And remember, we had one winding missing on it. So let's see how close it was. Okay, attached it to the magic box. Uh, when I attached it with one winding less than it is when I was first taking it apart, uh, if you'll recall, the uh, inductance was uh, right around 0.01 millihenries or 10 microhenries and it was 2.2 ohms so let's put the magic box to it and see how that goes and um, I've already tested it and recorded it on the inset so hopefully we've got a, a, the same numbers uh, in this case it shows 2.4 ohms and 0 0.01 millihenries and on the previous it had it was 2.2 ohms so I think we're in the ballpark I really think this is going to work for us if you remember the antenna coil was okay checked good I went ahead and replaced the wires uh, one goes to the tuning condenser one goes to the grid cap and the other one goes to the volume control uh, and I put the magic box on it just for documentation uh, for future reference, anybody would like to know uh, what it is. Um, the primary of it is 2.8 ohms, and it's 0 0.02 millihenries. That's not wanting to focus good, I don't think, because of the bright light, I guess. But uh, 2.8 ohms, 0 0.02 millihenries, that's uh, 20 microhenries. The secondary side is 6.2 ohms and 0.33 millihenries, or that'd be 330 microhenries. So uh, there's there's documentation of how many windings there is, but as far as uh, uh, values, that's uh, that's what I read on mine. Here's the uh, IF transformer, and this is the four meg resistor that uh, is recommended uh, to put uh, a 2 meg. I think I have a 2.2 meg that I'm going to put. All I'm going to do is cut the leads as long as I possibly can and do the corkscrew method. But I'm also going to have to replace this. This is the grid cap wire. 
that's coming out uh, attached to the other 77. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much as far as the other wires. I am not going to uh, change any of these because I don't want to get into all this other coil. And these are okay. There's not there's no crack. They're just uh, they're just nasty looking, but uh, the insulation's in really good shape. We're getting really close to putting this thing back together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do some patching on the the speaker, and you guys know the drill. We're gonna take some uh, glue, uh, uh, wood glue, or I use Gorilla Glue. Water it down a little bit. Take some. Uh, uh, coffee filter paper, fray the edges, and uh, just put some in place here. Uh, I'm gonna rip, well, I'm, now I'm going to patch this one. This had a Band-Aid on it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this and because uh, we're getting ready to put this thing back together. But before we patch the speaker, I'm thinking that we're going to have to we need to go ahead and replace this wire. If you can look down in here, the frayed edges and the cracked wires. So we will uh, we'll try to put that back uh, uh, the way it's supposed to be. I don't have any white wire, so we'll just have to use yellow in uh, in the process there. You're saying what happened? Did you start over? Got all the components back in. Uh, you can see the new filter capacitor uh, is in and this resistor the 325 ohm resistor is going to stay now these other ones are still in place I left them on the uh, block capacitors now why did I do that I'm going to replace them well they were not in my way to rebuild the capacitors okay and they held the spot for where they need to go Yes, I can go back from the schematic and put them in, but to me, now this is just me, do whatever you want to, uh, but uh, I just replace the components and put it back, verify it on the schematic, and be done with it. Uh, it's just kind of like holding a place for the new component. So I'm going to start here. I've already um, put a, I'm gluing a, uh, a fuse block in and then I'll start with the power and start working working my way over update guys fuse holders in um, the uh, AC will uh, positive will uh, come into this side it'll come around go through the switch goes back to the one side of the primary of the transformer the other side of the primary comes into here where it's tied into the capacitor uh, and also the uh, uh, neutral from the AC line will be coming in here. Notice the uh, some of the uh, wires from the uh, transformer, they were cracked and, and actually wire was showing so I, uh, I put some heat shrink on that, uh, brought the uh, uh, from the one of the filaments down to the 10 microfarad capacitor also the the field coil will attach here and to the four or the 4.7 microfarad capacitor got the common coming down uh, going to the center tap uh, here uh, got the antenna replaced the wire from the antenna clip on the back brought it to the top side of the potentiometer that's uh, the volume control and the center or the wiper uh, of the potentiometer it's going to the antenna primary uh, uh, the coil the antenna coil primary so got this side done gonna have to go from here and replace some of these uh, uh, components and make these tie points together and we'll be ready there's an update okay Got it all back together, I think. <laughs> Got the new components, new resistors in. I had replaced, uh, uh, you know, the ones. I had left them on the block capacitors, 
just as a holding point. I was beginning to wonder if that was going to be a problem because I was going to, I'd had to clean the terminals when I took the, uh, uh, the resistors off, but uh, actually it worked out pretty good for me because with these little block capacitors, when you're trying to work with them, unless you've got something to secure them on your table, they wiggle around and squirt away from you. In this case, when I had them mounted back into the chassis, uh, they were secure and I was able to clean the, the terminals off and, and, and put it back in place. Had to replace some of the wires. Uh, uh, some were cracked, some were... Uh, uh, too short after I cut them, but uh, that wasn't a, wasn't a problem. Uh, put in my power cord, uh, put my UL knot, and let's see, let's flip it over here and see what we can do here. Went ahead, put the tubes in. This is a little, that's where I glued it. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit more. After the glue dried, the uh, uh, it didn't uh, want to work so good. But uh, as you can see, how it looks on the top side now. The only thing I have not done yet, <clears throat> excuse me, is connect the speaker. Uh, one of the terminals will go here, and one will go each to the B plus on the uh, 10 microfarad and the 4 microfarad. Uh, so we just, I think what I'm going to do for test purposes, I'm just going to clip them in with some alligator clips. Uh, that way, if we have to troubleshoot or anything like that, then I can remove it easily but if I go ahead and hardwire it right now it could be a problem so let me clip these in place and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put some power on this and see what it's gonna do now I want a disclaimer right off the bat this receiver has two RF tubes what actually one and a half um, the 277s is the detector and the IF amp and then um, the one output tube and a so I from what I've read this is not something that's just going to be a great radio even in its better day in its best day I don't think it was a good receiver so we'll see we'll see what we got first off we got to get it to work We've got a voltmeter connected to the filter capacitor underneath, uh, so we'll be looking at the high voltage. I've uh, got my speaker hooked up, just temporarily clipped in, in case we have to pull it back off. Uh, I changed the light bulb. Uh, that was bad. Got the tubes in. Uh, I went ahead and connected an antenna and a ground wire. Uh, even though this is not a re... Uh, uh, a TRF, it is a regenerative, so uh, I felt like that it's very important to have a good ground on it. So we've got that going. We're going to bring it up slow. You'll be able to watch the high voltage. I'll watch the uh, amps and, and everything on this. So let's go ahead and fire it up a little bit. Maybe that's not the right term. We'll go ahead and run it up to about 30 volts or so. Uh, current is 100 milliamps AC on the primary side a little bit of glow there we'll see yeah, I don't know if you can see it maybe you can all right uh, let's let it sit there a few minutes While we're sitting there letting it cook in, let you look at the patches on the, uh, kind of looks like where birds have stopped to rest, but uh, it, I uh, hope it works. The cone was very, very rotten also, so hopefully. All right, let's go up to about 60 volts or so. And see, let it. Let it cook a little bit. Let it form those capacitors. 
Um, everybody has a different way of doing this, I think. But uh, so far, the current is less than 200 milliamps. We're not getting any high voltage. Uh, and there may be a reason for that. Reckon I need to hook it up. <laughs> well, the high voltage just happens to be on this uh, where the uh, speaker. So let's go ahead and hook this up. Well, I want to make sure it don't pop off somewhere during the evolution. All right, we've got 22 volts. That's the reason we did wasn't getting anything. But the current still looks good. It's less than 200 milliamps, and we're sitting at 60 volts. Let's go on up to about 9-ish. We're starting to see an increase in that uh, high voltage. Starting to get a hum. Okay. Definitely got, let's see, tubes are lighting up. Sound like our audio amps going to be working okay. got some sound here but we're sitting at 90 volts so I don't like that hum though let's go on up to 110 volts oh yeah we definitely got more hum and if you'll notice the volume does not do anything for that it doesn't sound like a uh, filter. Alright, let's let's see if we can tune something here. Let, let's just go ahead and go to 115 volts. That's what it's rated for. So we're looking at 260 volts. That sounds about right. Definitely probably going to have to be a line, but station at 90 volts. Did that scare you? <laughs> free of the files or ask about their free six there we go. Playaway plan. Shop the old or white stores in Southeast Tennessee. That's Scott's furniture. Celebrating 42 years of the all right, we've got one station. Let's check another station. There's two stations, so we got two. But look, I'm not getting anything. Let me, let me do something. Let me check something real quick. Uh, let me come back in just a second. I'm going to look. Alright, I've turned the volume all the way down. I've got a little bit of station going there. So that's three stations I've got. No, I'm taking that. That's only two. So, so listen to that. Do you remember this ground that's coming through this... Uh, ribbon on the amplifier tube? Well, I thought I had agitated it and heated it and got a good continuity there. Let's try clipping a ground to that spot. 
What do you think about that? So there, I did not fix that. Did not fix that. All right. And that number three, three. One, two, three. So I think our oscillator coil worked okay. We're going to have to go through all this anyway. So we got a little buzz I don't like. Okay, there's four stations without an alignment. Okay. All right. I think we got something to start with. Uh, our coil winding was successful. Our rebuild looks successful. Uh, I'm going to have to do something about a ground to permanently put a screw or something to get a ground on that pin for sure. And then uh, permanently wire the speaker in. Now next time we'll go through an alignment. We will work really hard on that cabinet to get that beefed up get it ready to go and what have you and try to put this all back together within the next but uh, I, I want to go through the alignment with the regenerative regener fee uh, feedback loop and and all that uh, explore that a little bit maybe I can learn a little more about it and maybe we can get this thing receiving a little bit better so that's going to be it for this for this uh, part and like I say, we're going to hit that cabinet really hard this next time. I'm not going to hit it too hard because it'll fall apart. <laughs> so anyway, hey, I appreciate everybody for watching. If you like it, click like. If you don't, you know, that's fine. Um, if you subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If Share it. Maybe somebody else might like this. Who knows? But anyway, from Larry from the hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.